Hey, we got two gifts for these guys, but I'm gonna let them fight it out for the best one. Winner gets the bag with the surprise inside, loser gets the shirt. One shot. The NWO consists of some of the nation's best athletes. Not that NWO. This one. The moniker was adopted by the Ole Miss wide receiver core back in 2017. And the nasty wideouts were never stronger than this past year, but they had two players drafted in the second round of the NFL draft. Combine killer DK Metcalf and polished route runner AJ Brown. But if you scrolled all the way down the wide receiver depth chart, you'd find the heart and soul of the NWO. Floyd Allen, a player who lived the true Juco struggle, had the scratch and claw for every inch before he finally earned a scholarship during his senior year at Ole Miss. This is a story of true perseverance through the darkest of circumstances. Today, we take a detailed look at the story of Floyd Allen. Cue the way. Floyd Allen was born and raised not too far from where I'm recording this video, in Houston, Texas. When he was a kid, one day after football practice, Floyd made it home where he walked in on his parents engaged in a heated argument. A fight so bad that it led to his dad walking out of the house and literally never coming back. Dude just dipped, left Floyd, Floyd's mom, and Floyd's little sister to fend for themselves. Sometimes relationships don't work out, that's life. But if you're a man and you're watching this video, fellas, take care of your kids, man. Shit crazy. As you might imagine, this event forever changed Floyd as he had a difficult time processing what happened. He didn't have much time to sit around and cope though. He had to get a part-time job to help support the family. Home life obviously wasn't going great and neither was life on the football field as Floyd, now a junior in high school, was stuck in a backup quarterback role for his team. Going into his senior year, standing 5'8", weighing about 170, he decided to make a position change. Due to his time spent at quarterback, Floyd understood coverages and knew how to manipulate defenses. Then add to his natural athletic ability, his body control, change of direction, and his work ethic, and you have quite a lot to work with there. Now, I ran into a few inconsistencies while researching the next part of the story. Different articles kind of left out parts or kind of had conflicting information. So I reached out to Floyd on Twitter and I got to send a huge shout out to him for clearing things up for me. Dude's really busy right now as he's literally trying to achieve his dreams of making an NFL roster. But he took the time out to answer some questions to help us get the story right. So be sure to show dude some love on social media. So Floyd worked to gain competence at his new position during the summer prior to his senior year in high school. He began attending football camps in hopes of placing himself onto the radars of college scouts. The University of Colorado held the camp in Houston, Floyd was there. UTEP held the camp, of course, Floyd was in the building and at every camp he attended, he achieved his goal of raising his profile. He gained the attention of college coaches at each camp who all wanted to keep an eye on Floyd during his senior season placing him one step closer to gaining that coveted scholarship offer. Now remember, the year before, he was a backup QB dude, couldn't even get on the field. So although he hadn't officially gotten an offer at this point, but was gaining interest from college coaches, I mean, this was a huge deal. Things were starting to look up for Floyd. He'd made some definitive choices and put in the work, and he was beginning to see the fruits of his labor. But he wasn't done. He wanted to attend every camp that he could to give himself the absolute best chance to play college football. Not to mention continuing to sharpen his skills with each pass in camp. July 15th, 2013, all of that momentum and traction that Floyd had built up, it all came to an abrupt halt. While attending the camp held by LSU one day before Floyd's 17th birthday, going all out, he planted awkwardly and ended up tearing his ACL. Needless to say, the senior season was now in serious jeopardy. This had to be one of the worst birthdays ever as I can't really imagine much from a football standpoint that could be worse for a player with no film who's kind of on the bubble. He was poised to have a good senior season and go on off to college and now he's got a torn ACL. 
Dude was obviously crushed and he did everything he could to get back on the field. One doctor presented Floyd with an option to wear a brace and play through the injury. It would be painful, but it would allow Floyd to get on the field. Determined to salvage what he could of his senior year, Floyd jumped at the opportunity, but the brace was expensive and finances had been really tight since Floyd's dad had left. Floyd's mom ended up taking cash out of her 401k to afford the $1,000 knee brace, a sacrifice she made so Floyd could play one more year of high school football. I want y'all to keep that in mind as the story goes on and you see how much this dude pushes, how many times a normal person would have given up. I believe it's things like this in the back of his mind, knowing what his mom sacrificed in order to give him a chance, that helped to keep pushing him along throughout his journey. So Floyd got the brace and it allowed him to run pretty well in a straight line, but cutting was difficult, clumsy, and very painful. He obviously wasn't the same player. One by one, all the schools who had shown interest began to distance themselves from Floyd. And when it was all said and done, Floyd didn't receive one scholarship offer, not at first. Fortunately, Floyd's high school coach put in a call to one of his friends at Bethany College. They decided to take a chance on Floyd and offered him a scholarship. Floyd was grateful for the opportunity. He quickly accepted the scholarship and put his all into playing ball while simultaneously working at Subway to help his mom back at home with the finances. It's not easy working a job as a student athlete. It's something that you may be able to get away with at smaller schools despite NCAA rules, but even if you can get away with it, just from a time standpoint being a student athlete is a full-time job in itself it's a full-time grind so to also work a part-time job should not be understated still the opportunity at Bethany allowed him to play ball continue to regain his form after the knee injury and get some college experience but after he'd regained said form Floyd knew he could play at a higher level so he returned home to Houston where he worked out rigorously and prepared himself for the next opportunity in the meantime, he got a job at Chuck E. Cheese and it just worked and worked out every day. This went on for about four months with no good news of a new opportunity to play ball. At one point, he was contacted by a local community college, but things with that didn't quite work out. Then one night, Floyd got a call from CJ Martinez. That was the DB coach at Bethany during Floyd's time there. Coach Martinez had gotten a job at Santa Monica Community College and he wanted Floyd to come out and give it a shot. This seemed like the opportunity he'd been waiting on. He had a few months before he had the report, so he picked up some extra shifts at work to save up money, turned his workouts up even more, and eventually headed out to California where he was immediately smacked in the face with the Cali Juco struggle, which again, is real. Here's a short clip from last summer of me explaining why it's so tough. Junior college football can be tough and grimy. We know this, but in California, it's on a whole nother level. California junior colleges have a whole set of rules of their own. They don't have scholarships. They don't have meal plans. They don't even have dorms. These guys are literally sleeping in their cars or having 12 guys to a two bedroom apartment, scrounging for food and just trying to survive, assuming you're not from the surrounding area. And still, despite not having these basic needs met, they're still asked to go out and perform. I want everybody watching or listening or whatever to stop for a second and ask yourself, for real, you ain't gotta tell nobody, be honest with yourself. Could you thrive in that environment? Being from out of state, Floyd was hit hard with the reality of his new situation. The coach had of course been upfront about this, but nothing can prepare you for it until you're actually there. Tons of players fighting for a few roster spots and not enough playing time to go around. Severely underfunded schools with no meal plans or scholarships or dorms or bruh. Here's what a typical day looked like for Floyd at that time. He woke up early to jam in as many morning classes as possible, which was now a necessity because of course, his credits from Bethany College didn't transfer. Like it always seemed to go like that, right? That ended up making him ineligible for the first year. So he's just out there grinding and struggling and can't even play. After that, he'd walk to his job at McDonald's where he worked a five or six hour shift. Then he'd walk another 1.7 miles to practice. Sometimes he'd run cause he was late. Then he'd practice and get yelled at in the sun and hit for three hours. Grab food, attend meeting, and then walk back to his two bedroom apartment where he and five of his other teammates all stayed. 
six grown men in a two bedroom apartment would drive most people crazy within like a couple days. Obviously, this was out of necessity as California prices are ridiculous and a two bedroom apartment had a $3,200 rent. I'm still wondering if that's a typo. $3,200 rent? for a two bed bro. So they needed as many people as possible to split up the cost of this extremely expensive rent. There were plenty of days where Floyd asked himself if he could continue to do this with no return. And while he had his moments, he never let his circumstances take control of his mental. That's where he was able to stay strong and eventually win, but not yet. Following the 2015 season, Floyd transferred yet again as all the coaches left as they often do in Cali Juco's and went on to get better job. This time Floyd went 30 minutes south to El Camino College where he played with none other than this guy, David Seals. If you haven't seen my video on David Seals, he has an amazing story in his own right in which I also cover his time at El Camino College and by a crazy coincidence, Floyd ends up at El Camino playing wide receiver at the exact same time that David is there playing quarterback. Fortunately, they're now both on to much greener pastures, but more on that later. Floyd's time at El Camino was even tougher than his time at Santa Monica. At least at Santa Monica, he had an overcrowded apartment to stay at. Here, he wasn't so lucky. He didn't have money to put down on the apartment for the first several weeks he was there. He was working but still had to wait a few weeks before he got paid. It's nothing worse than being dead broke and getting a job in the middle of the pay period. So now you gotta wait three weeks before you get paid, bro. It's, it's ridiculous. In the meantime, Floyd slept in his car. He parked at Alondra Park and laid in the back seat where he obviously had trouble getting some decent rest. You know, I imagine that those must have been the longest nights of Floyd's life. I mean, it's just you in a damn park in a damn car on the back seat. And you gotta be thinking to yourself at this point, this is my second Juco. I still got nothing to show for it. I don't have much film. Things didn't work out in high school. I'm only getting older. What am I doing, man? Maybe I should just drive home. Maybe I should just take my next check, gas up my car and drive all the way back to Houston and figure things out from there. But he stuck it out. He didn't wanna burden anyone, so he never spoke about it to his mom who had problems of her own. He didn't even mention it to the coaches. He just kept it all in. Then the season rolls around and he remembers, yo, all right, this is why I'm here. First day of fall camp, he fractures his ankle, dog. <laughs> like, I'm done, bro, I'm done. I'm done, dog. He went through a long, grueling recovery process. Once he was recovered, Floyd and a few teammates drove seven hours to a JUCO camp looking for their next opportunity. Floyd knew he was obviously talented, but there were so many other guys attending these camps, he had to find a way to draw the coach's attention, a way to keep their eyes glued to him so that he can impress them. He decided to wear a neon hat. Unconventional, but it worked. He dazzled scouts at the camp. His body control had improved even more. His ACL injury from way back in high school had caused Floyd to look into why he put himself in a position to tear his ACL in the first place. He realized it was all about balance and leverage. And over all these years at different JUCOs and different camps and at home on his own, he had perfected his route running and was head over heels better than everybody else at the camp. He impressed the coaches at Ole Miss and this bred that next big opportunity that he had worked so damn hard for. Ole Miss invited Floyd to join the team as a walk-on. Once he was there, he continued to work and his journey to get to that point, his skill level, unselfishness, and unbelievable work ethic afforded Floyd the opportunity of a lifetime. A heartwarming moment that you guys have to experience for yourself. Check this out. Come here, Floyd. Come here, Floyd. I, I look at him. Hey, I look out, I don't even recognize these guys and these numbers. Him and Willie Hibbler were on the same special teams. What's he do? Hey, coach, I want to get on the bus. I don't care what my number is. Change it. Hey, we got two gifts for these guys, but I'm going to let them fight it out for the best one. Winner gets the bag with the surprise inside. Loser gets the shirt. One shot. It just rushes me. Yeah! Selfish. 
Davis. Yeah. It's about being a family. Hey, hey, because hey, hey, special players can win any game. Right. But a great team can win every, every game. game. Every game. Hey, 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 congratulations. I love you. Hey, tell me on three. I can't imagine a flood of emotion dude must have felt when this happened. Something he worked so hard for, risked it all for, slept in his car for, got injured, shook back, transferred, transferred again. Just people doubted him and I'm sure at times he even doubted himself. But he kept pushing aggressively toward his goal and eventually it had no choice but to come through. Like things just kind of got out of the way after he continued to push. At this point, Floyd had climbed and climbed, pushing forward against all odds to get here. But when he came down off his high of emotion, he realized he still had quite a long way to go. He was at the bottom of the depth chart and he saw two surefire NFL draft prospects at his position. He saw savvy seniors with superior size, promising freshmen with unbelievable potential. But none of it mattered. Floyd's grind just couldn't be denied. With that said, he saw an unbelievably limited amount of snaps on offense, only appearing in six games, and he could have easily become frustrated, but he just took pride in his special team's duties and made the most of every opportunity that he got, much like he had done all the way up to this point. Given how unbelievably difficult his journey had been already, he could have felt entitled and complained about not getting enough PT, but he never did. The senior wide receiver only made a grand total of four measly catches for 44 yards during the 2018 season, and he never saw the end zone once at Ole Miss. Do that as a senior who walked on the year before, and your football career should pretty much be over but not Floyd. When the NFL draft rolled around, both AJ Brown and DK Metcalf were drafted in the second round. Floyd didn't expect to hear his name, but may have had a little bit of hope in the back of his mind during the late rounds. After the season ended, Floyd wasn't exactly sure what the next step would be. Still, he trained hard for months for Ole Miss's Pro Day, and he impressed the scouts. He measured in at 5'9", 204 pounds, ran a 4'4", 3, and recorded a 35-inch vertical. But thanks to his lack of size and his lack of college production, unsurprisingly, this was not enough to get him drafted. This was, however, enough to secure him a workout with his hometown team, the Houston Texans. And as you'd expect after listening to this whole story, Floyd did not disappoint. He made the most of the opportunity, impressing the Texans so much that they signed him to a free agent contract. After all that work, all those gambles, setbacks, triumphs, defeats, L's, bro. He still ended up making it to the highest level. He never made excuses. He never quit. He knew what he wanted and he constantly put himself in position to take advantage of every single opportunity that was afforded to him. And every single time the door got slammed in his face, it was his mindset that never let him quit and always ended up opening another one. That's the story of Floyd Allen. He's now with the Houston Texans. My name is Flem Low Raps. I'ma holler at you next time. One. Yeah, I'm no quitter, cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go.